Welcome to the party I tell. So some housekeeping. In the first impressions video I released, quite a number of you seemed to have a beef with the naming of this item. S23 Plus is hitting too close to home with Samsung diehards. If you missed my first impressions, I got you. Holding it in the hand, this phone is very light and very thin. It makes my Google Pixel 6 feel like a brick. It's a more mature aesthetic now with no vulgar design patterns on the back or obnoxious branding. You have a dual camera setup on the back and a dual LED flash. The SIM tray is on the bottom and this time it's missing the usual memory card slot. It's now just purely a dual SIM tray full stop. The star of the show is the front panel. Check this, a 6.78 inch Full HD AMOLED display complete with curved edges. And remember, this is a sub $200 phone. That stat alone I feel is worth a shout, and it does look premium. You will struggle to guess that it's that cheap. Oh, and it still comes with a selfie flash on the top bezel. So let's talk features. It's got the usual useful tricks for your social media, especially for WhatsApp. A whole menu in the settings called Social Turbo is dedicated just for WhatsApp. It gives you some really useful features too. There is video retouching, which is a beautifying filter for your WhatsApp video calls. Peak mode allows you to read a message without the blue ticks reporting that you saw it, and it can also allow you to read deleted messages. Then there is the voice recorder, which for me is an absolute favorite. It allows you to record WhatsApp voice calls. To this day, I wonder why WhatsApp has not enabled this feature. I don't care about being able to put voice notes on my status, I want to be able to record voice calls. There is a video assistant that mutes all notifications when you're playing videos on certain apps. And you can add your own apps on top of the ones set there by default. It also has memory fusion tech where the phone can borrow a bit of your internal storage to supplement the phone's available RAM if you feel like the dedicated RAM just doesn't cut it. Okay, so this next one is probably the most genius use of AI I have seen so far. Back when I checked out the Techno Phantom X, I went into Techno's device assistant called Ella. As a first attempt, it was alright, I mean it worked, but it was a long way off Google Assistant, Siri or even Amazon's Alexa. So what did they do with the ITIL S23 Plus? Well simple, they just put some custom tweaks to ChatGPT and they're calling it Ivana. This drastically closes the gap to the likes of Google Assistant. It's much more usable now and can actually sustain a conversation thanks to the impressive conversational chops already baked into ChatGPT that is powering it. It's competent as well and can fulfill commands to play specific playlists in the default music player app Boomplay. You can ask it to call a saved contact and you can ask it to set an alarm or run a countdown timer. So it's a really competent assistant no doubt. So competent in fact that I'm asking myself why they did not make it the default assistant on the ITEL. Also, forgive me but the display just feels out of place on a sub $200 phone. It's just a really good display. Oh and I almost forgot, it's got an underscreen fingerprint, something that has so far only been possible on AMOLED screens. It also features a fully customizable always on display with some really good looking default options too, like this polygon style lion that I've got going on here. It's really impressive. Alright, so performance. This is where we start to see where ITIL saved a couple of bucks off the S23 Plus. This particular one I have has 8GB of RAM and 256GB of internal storage. The CPU is the first part where they saved a few bucks. They went for a Unisoc T616 built on a 12 nanometer process that was released somewhere in 2021. We also don't have a hybrid SIM slot that we were so used to. Previously, we had the option of a dual SIM and memory card all on the same SIM tray, but the option for a memory card is no longer here. So is the option for the headphone jack, that also got deleted on the S23 Plus. Yeah, the second camera does nothing. They didn't even bother to tell us anything on the spec sheet and only mentioned the 50 megapixel main camera and the 32 megapixel selfie camera. General use is what you'd expect. It's pretty much an entry level smartphone, so it's absolutely perfect if you're using it for calls, social media, and very light gaming. Once usage goes beyond this, it starts to struggle a bit, so heavy third party customizations might affect performance like custom keyboards with swimming fish in the background or heavy cap cut editing. 
the Unisoc T616 is just not built for that. Battery performance is brilliant. It's packing a 5000 mAh battery with 18 watt fast charging and it walked through the endurance test without even breaking a sweat. It lost just 30% of its battery after an hour of video streaming, gaming and video recording. It's failed to dethrone the Technopova 2 with its insane 7000 mAh battery but it's still an easy 2 day phone and if you give it to your granny she can probably go for close to a week without charging it. The battery life is A plus easy. And this phone is ridiculously thin so I wonder how they were able to fit a battery this big in it. Okay, so the cameras. There is a 50 megapixel main camera on the back and a 32 megapixel selfie camera. By default, these cameras do a 4 to 1 bin, so the actual size of the photos is 12.5 megapixels for the rear camera and 8 megapixels for the selfie camera. They do this to be able to extract a better looking image from the camera. Information from 4 pixels is combined into one for the final image. You can still capture full resolution photos if you want, there is an option for it in the menu which I doubt many will bother with, but I am still happy that the option is still there. The image quality is alright, remember this is a sub $200 phone, so since the chipset and camera are chosen with cost cutting in mind, it's a mid tier camera experience. In good lighting you can have some good photos. You have some good sharpness and detail in the images. The 50 megapixel camera is working hard on dynamic range as well, it preserves some details in the darker parts of the image. I also love the lack of fringing on the edges of the images, something that is usually seen when very poor quality cameras are used. The S23 Plus produces pictures that are consistent all the way to the edges. Selfies are also brilliant, I actually think that the images from the selfie camera look just a bit better than the images from the main camera. It might be due to the added vibrance to the selfies but they are really good, sharp and detailed. It also does a good job with the details and tone of my skin, it's picking up the oiliness pretty accurately and so is it picking up the imperfections on the surface of my skin. It is having a hard time with the beard though primarily because it was taken indoors with artificial lighting. Once the lighting becomes anything less than ideal you start to see it fall apart, starting with the darker areas of the image like my black beard. It tends to compensate for the lack of detail with some over sharpening but this also introduces graining that again affects the image quality. I will again make a reference to the price of the S23 Plus and when I do I see that for the price the cameras are doing probably the best job in this class of device. They are challenged in challenging conditions but in ideal conditions they rise up to the occasion. So the ITIL S23 Plus is just a really mature and well rounded device. It looks more than it's worth, it's very usable day to day with my personal highlight being that OLED display. It's not like it's the best display in any phone right now but it's still good enough to earn my approval. An absolute pleasure and marvel that it's there at this price. It is an important point on price because it's now really close to the Samsung Galaxy M24s or better yet the A24 which also has a mature design and an AMOLED display with a higher 90Hz refresh rate. These galaxies are in the $220 to $250 price range so for the ITIL to compete it had to be under $200 bucks for it to be worth considering. My thoughts on the ITIL S23 Plus for the money? Get it, absolutely, 10 out of 10 recommend.